Bye. So it is the last happy hour. Patricia, it is sad. There's dad. Yeah. Yeah. There's dad. There's Ryan. And dad is in front of the photo, the picture, the painting that I have of the vineyard. So he's in the vineyard to give his vineyard talk today. Well, good. Yeah. So it's all official. And I have, while we're waiting for a couple people, I have a couple things to share because Tony, you're going to want to hear this. I know you're going to want to hear this. Um, for those guys, for those of you who missed it at the end of last week, you heard we all got written up in the Good Fruit Grower with Happy Hour. So you guys all made the Good Fruit Grower too. Wow. Yeah. I thought that was pretty fun. And um, one of the one of the things that got written up, we were in the technology and innovation issue, um, <laughs> was the um, I'm doing a tasting uh, with Karen McNeil for the Auction of Washington Wine. There's a series of those, and um, because this is the last one of these, um, and I know Tony gets sad if he has to drink without us, uh, and we don't want we don't want that. So. Um, so is it the last one of these forever or just the last one until harvest is over? It's the last one until harvest is over because I can't commit to things when I have to be making wine instead. So just wanted to make sure we were clear on what you were saying. <laughs> okay. The, um, so then uh, that one, I think it's September 20th. It's um, us. And then I have the wines here already. Double back which you can't see. This is Drew Bledsoe's winery. Um, and the bottle's really heavy. And uh, Hedges, another from Red Mountain. And I think we're talking about vineyard designated wines. So the link to that one, if you go to the auction of Washington Wines, if you don't have the links, if you haven't been going to these, just um, shoot me a note. I can keep you posted. I can send it to you. It's, uh, Carrie, it's September 10th, I believe. Oh, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've uh, logged into a few of Karen's uh, talks before, so it's, it's, uh, it's really cool. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad that you know my schedule. Will you remind me on the 9th, Tony, that I'm supposed to be there? Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Beth, the, we don't have distribution in Texas right now, so there's no retailers that can get the wines. But we're getting to the point in the season where we can ship you some because I bet that 09 Tamarack is good, but 09 Coat is probably is good. It's good too. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we can get you those. And then my other, my third point, this is my uh, place to remind myself not to forget things. Uh, I have a bottle of train station as a reminder that the, um, we, as of today, are actually, Yakima County got allowed to move, well, we didn't move forward a phase because the state is frozen, but Yakima has been, a, according to our governor, Yakima is a good example of, um, of how, what to do with the disease. And so we can now, we're now allowed to do more things, uh, indoor restaurants, indoor tastings, things like that. So we're still doing everything by reservations and appointments. But if you want to come over and visit us, it is now easier. And um, and Ryan and Amy, you should come up and yep. just come up from California. So, all right. We have a couple of guests that we should probably introduce. We, have, we do. Uh, um, you want to start with Bobby or Annie? Or, I mean, we got so many. Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with Bobby because she's at the top of my screen. Um, <laughs> So Bobby is uh, the current owner and uh, lives in the Cote Bonneville estate. So she's going to be telling us all about the estate, which is fabulous. And we also have Annie Morningstar. Raise Annie, your hand. Yeah, wave. 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 And um, Annie is a wonderful addition to this call because in addition to the fact that it's always good to see her lovely smiling face, we have her to thank for all of the labels. So. Um, Annie is the person, the designer who took the concept and the idea and made it all of these beautiful labels that we appreciate and love so much. So um, we're going to hear from them after dad gives his update of what's going on in the vineyard. 
So I have to let him talk. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Am I unmuted? You are. Okay. Oh, wait. I'll show your pictures. There we go. Okay, so this is a, a review of the high points from every growing season. <clears throat> this year, uh, bud break in the Syrahs, what we showed first, it happened before uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. The next picture is the cab coming along. We couldn't leave it out. And it turns out that uh, Cabernet this year really uh, promises great things. And the Syrah is starting to shape up like a special year too. Then the second high point in the growing season is bloom. And again, uh, the Syrah lead, you can see that cluster with uh, uh, just getting ready to rock and roll. And then uh, the Cabernet the same day was trailing a little bit behind, but it's getting ready to, to bust open and do its thing. Then the third high point in the growing season is Verasion. And uh, we've got uh, the first beginning uh, turn of the Syrah and then the Cabernet. Syrah and Cabernet. Okay, and then one week later, one week later, it just went crazy. That's the Cabernet with the nets already on to protect from the birds and you can see in one week how much change, uh, all those clusters you can see on there and Syrah came in the same pattern. Uh, it's getting getting going. Cabernet it just changes before everything else, but takes longer to mature. And then the report from today in the vineyard, uh, you can see the... Syrah. Uh, that's the Syrah uh, focused on the clusters and uh, they're not too big and the berries aren't too big. So uh, for the red wines, it looks like uh, it's gonna be a beautiful year. And then uh, the last image is the Cabernet from today where um, the clusters aren't huge. The berries are, are beautiful, just the right size, uh, the promise keeps rolling. And then uh, there are a couple of thank yous I wanted to uh, continue with what Carrie was saying. Um, Bobby's parents, uh, Tony and Roberta Michaels, were incredibly generous with the house and lining up the 1936 Pierce Arrow that's on our labels. Um, Annie, of course, and Charles uh, did uh, an incredible suite of labels for us. Uh, the croquettes that are featured today are from our vast friends, Paki and Justo Soria in uh, uh, Boise. We want to give a special thank you to Harvey Steinman who came back a second time in response to Paul's uh, question, will you talk about what it's like to be a wine critic? And then uh, the other person that uh, is very vivid, uh, Andrea Johnson's photos, I plan to visit after harvest when things settle down. Those were spectacular. Kathy and Carrie, uh, their creativity, excuse me. It's been uh, a wonderful time and I can't thank them enough for what they did. Okay, right. any questions about the vineyard? Yeah, do we have any questions? Should we mute Dad again? Put him out of his the music? high point of the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Annie, it's fun that I have the controls and <laughs> I get to mute my father every week. So, so did anybody make the croquettes? Nobody. No. Well, you need to. They're delicious. You yes. can. And the aioli is fabulous. Yeah, the saffron aioli. They're hard to show on a screen. So, sorry. But I didn't get distributed on the list this week. Pardon me? I couldn't find it on my emails this week. Uh-oh. Oh, oh well, so I'll well, make sure we'll, you get it. We'll get I'll, it. Send, I'll send it to you again. It's pretty spectacular. Yep. And so, you know, the great thing is, unless you can't find the emails like Elise, you, we've got... We've got the history. If you guys want to go back, and if you like, if you can't find that hummus recipe or something, just shoot us a note. We can always send you the recipes again. And um, as Dad alluded to, we do have all of these on um, YouTube. So 
I know that some of you guys have gone back and watched the ones that you missed, but um, if you haven't, that's a good opportunity. And also on the YouTube, because apparently Dan didn't know that I was putting everything on YouTube. I also have my, we've got the, uh, my Tasting Tuesdays, um, which we were talking about earlier. On Tuesday, every day, every week, I, they're like a minute video from IGTV, but um, that series started and recently again had me tasting in the winery out of a pitcher and um, like out of the tanks. And so if you want to watch those and we follow the vineyard every week again in a little more, I do a minute and those on Fridays are also on the YouTube channel. So uh, head over there and subscribe. I will keep doing those and then you'll keep get, get those updated uh, even when we're not doing happy hours. So we should ask, what is everybody, is everybody drinking coat because it's Wednesday? Or what are you guys drinking tonight? Nothing. Oh, there you go. All right. We've got this brief. <laughs> I right. like this. We've yeah. got the Riesling and the carriage house and the train station. Oh, and the coat. Oh, okay. good job, Paul. Yeah. Love that. Yep. And well, that'll be even a happier and hour for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And we can restock you guys like Ed, because now that we're open, we'll look forward to seeing you soon. All right, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Bobby because it's time to see what she's got to share about this beautiful house. Okay, I've got a lot. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start a PowerPoint presentation that I made because it's getting dark here in Cincinnati, so it's not very good to walk around the house. So I'm gonna to try to get this to come on and let me know if you guys can't see it. Just a second here. Mm -hmm. I think so. I'll double check. Yep, she can. Okay. Can you all see the PowerPoint starting? Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is a video. I started off with a video. This is the current property. Um, it, this shows the main house, and there's a bunch of things that you should notice here. Well, not a bunch of things, but the very top of the house, there's a very flat spot. That was built like that, uh, so people could go up and get great views of the city, um, of the sunset, of the sunrise, and my family goes up there a lot. Uh, they watch the fireworks and things like that. Um, so you're also looking at the carriage house, which is right now to the right. And I apologize because we tried this earlier and we had a little bit of a lag. So you might be seeing this in a little bit of a lag from what I'm talking about. Um, there's also the swimming pool there. And uh, there's a small garage on the property. All right. Now this is Napoleon de Brule, and I don't know how many of you are related to him on this tonight. But um, he was born in Canada in 1846, and he was an inventor, and he invented a lot of things. Um, he moved to the States when he was 21 years old, and that was in 1867. He moved to Chicago. He worked in a prison. He was a foreman in their pattern room, uh, their foundry, and their machine shop. And uh, he worked there for five years, and this is where he first started to apply for his patents, for his inventions. Um, he got his first patent in May of 1871, and that was for the lined, a tin-lined cigar mold. Um, he also married Lilios Legault while living in the United States. She was from Canada as well. And he moved her and uh, four brothers and a sister to Cincinnati. And he then proceeded to get more patents. From 1871 to 1895, he had 35 patents in 24 years. And some of his patents were for the treadle sewing machine, um, the barn lantern, that was a biggie, the screw press, um, transportation oil cans for railroads. And he also uh, had many patents in the cigar and uh, cigarette industry. Um, but he also found it very hard to compete in America. So he took his products to Europe and to South America and there he, got many more patents and did a lot of his business um, there. Okay, let's see here. All right, so when he moved to Cincinnati, this is, the, this is a sketch up of the property that he actually moved in. 
it was called a day woods that's where we are right now that's where the Cote Bonneville is right now um, this is the original house it didn't look too much like that sketch that you just saw but this is where Napoleon uh, came with his family and uh, this is the original house front that overlooks the city. So this front of this house is facing south. This is the backyard of that original house. Um, in the picture, that is Lilios and, I, and probably Albert. Uh, that is Napoleon's youngest son. And in the background, you can see the carriage house. That carriage house is still in existence today, but it was built in around 1850. So... Um, Albert was born in 1896, so that's getting to be the time when he tore down this house and actually built Cote Bonneville. Okay. And here he is building Cote Bonneville. Um, he hired an architect uh, by the name of William Ward Franklin. He was a, a professor at um, a college in Cincinnati, and he was the one to design this, and it was quite a, an undertaking for him. All right, okay, this is the side of the house while he's constructing it. That's Albert, his youngest son, in the window, and that is Napoleon standing there, uh, and the, that's what's, what's now a doorway in the house. Bobby, I'm gonna stop you right here. Because, sure. um, you can see the Cote Bonneville Napoleon Rule 1902 on the cornerstone there? Yep. And that, all of our corks are branded with that. That has been the logo from our vineyard since um, 1992. And it's what, why the winery is named Cote Bonneville. And like I said, all of our cor corks are branded with that cornerstone. Yeah. And it's on all the labels somewhere. So yeah. it, you can do the treasure hunt with the, with the wine you have and to find it. Yes, and we're gonna see more of that cornerstone because I have more pictures of that. So, okay. Um, all right, so here's, the, here's another picture of the cornerstone. That's the window that he's standing in today. And that's how it looks today versus what it looked like when they were building the house. So, oh, and also behind that cornerstone, and I don't know if Kathy and Carrie, if you know this, but um, supposedly behind that cornerstone, there's a time capsule that contains wine from the period of 1902. Oh, cool. um, money minted in 1902 and other um, memorabilia. So I don't know if that's still there, um, and we'll see a little bit more later, but uh, the, the actual original windowsill that's inside above the cornerstone is actually replaced with like a bad piece of plywood. Okay. So I think that somebody might have gone through there and tried to, to check the... Well, on that note, and Annie can remember this, um, I can't remember what year it was, but the TTB would not approve our wine labels. And... The reason the rosé the rosé was it the rosé the yeah. rosé uh -huh. the reason being that when you our logo had to have stay either founded or established mm -hmm. because I'm sure everybody thought our rosé was from 1902. 1902. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> a time capsule, but um, if you'll notice now, if you look very closely, it says we had a kind of sketch in there established. Mm -hmm just so that we could get label approvals and be able to sell our wine. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yay. So, um, Adrish asked, what's the origin of the name? And I will, I, I think, well, Cote means hillside. And um, Dad, do you know, I'm going to unmute you. It's a special day. You get to be unmuted again. Um, do you know what the, what the Bonneville came from? I think it's a, another generation back family name, but I'm not certain about that. Um, and so uh, I can't, I can't give you a definitive answer. Sorry. Okay, Carrie, I can sort of answer that. Um, you're absolutely right. Your dad is absolutely right. It is a family name. In fact, Albert's middle name, the little boy that's standing there was Bonneville but it also means like a good, uh, good city. Mm -hmm. So it was like uh, the house next to a good city or a pretty city or something like that too. So it had like two meanings. That's what I've heard. It's always what I've heard too, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. So. I like that. And um, 
Re wanted to know what part of the of the city it's in in Cincinnati. Um, it's actually um, it's at I seventy four and I seventy five, which is the western, a little bit west, and it's about four miles actually from the city itself. And we can see the city, and I'll have some pictures of that too. It's sort of hard to see from pictures, but. So if you want to get there, you go up Coleraine Avenue across from Mount Airy Forest entrance. That's right. That is right. Okay, so um, there's a better picture of the cornerstone, and that is on all of your wine. So, okay, and this is uh, actually Napoleon de Brule's family, and uh, that's his wife, Lilios, on the right and the youngest son, Albert's in the middle. He actually had nine children, but a couple of them died at a really young age. So there is six remaining. And when he built this house, only three of his kids moved into this house. They lived in the original house, but only three moved back into this house. My great grandfather is in the third row to the left. So what's his name? What's his name? Ernest. Ernest, okay. All right, that's him. That is him, right above Napoleon. Yeah. Okay, and this is just an early picture of the house. Um, you can see the carriage house to the left, and it's got an opening in it, which is no longer there. The, the carriage house is totally closed in now, but it used to be just a drive-through uh, for the carriages. That enclosure was the chapel that we got married in at the time that the Glen Mary sisters were there. That, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's not a chapel any longer. Union <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wine would be really good, though. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But the uh, the windows, the the uh, stations of the cross windows, are still in the back of the carriage house. Cool. So, this is just another old picture of the, uh, the the long ago, and these are the original buildings. Um, the building to the right was originally the. Um, the wash house, but when Napoleon built this new house, it became Albert's playhouse. So when we moved in, there was a little uh, sidewalk outside that said Albert on it. And I moved in here when I was a young kid uh, with my parents. So I've, li I've lived here, I moved out, and then I've come back since I took it over from my parents. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> You're welcome. And um, this is a pond that was um, on the original driveway. When we moved here, we used the original driveway, which is about a half a mile long. Um, it came from Coleraine Avenue all the way up to the house, but we only had an easement. So we only used that for a couple years. It was a beautiful, beautiful driveway, but now we come in out of the subdivision that's up here. Okay, uh, that's the original pool on the left. Um, it sort of looks like the pool that's on the right, but the pool on the left is, uh, was, it didn't have filtration, so it was filled in and uh, a new pool was built. And that's the house at nighttime. Okay, this is the turret. Um, on the turret, I don't know if you can see this, but at the very top it says 1902, and then underneath the windows, there's a carving that says ND for Napoleon. And the carving, there's carvings all over this house. Uh, he imported stonemasons, I believe, from England. And the carving is just phenomenal. Everything is just, you just can't ever see enough. It's limestone, isn't it, Bobby? Yes, it's, it's limestone. I think it's from Bedford, Indiana. I know it's Indiana. I think it's Bedford. And they did all the carving actually on the property, but um, Napoleon, they had the slabs numbered at the quarry. They brought them to the property, and then they carved them there and put them back together, I guess. Okay. And that graces our Riesling label. And also the late harvest Riesling. It's a different, it's the same turret, but a different angle. Well, it's black and, and it's a blacker label too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see the turret to the left. So that was what I just showed you, the window, that top, that top window is the turret. Right. Okay, and this is the fountain. This is the current fountain, but beyond the fountain, and it's really hard to see. I mean, there's no really good way to get a picture, and we can see it much better when you're here. But that's the city. You can see a big building, sort of just a little bit to the right of the fountain, and that is downtown. So we can see downtown, we can see the valley, we can see the trains, we can see a lot from here. 
And this is just another picture of the front of the house. And uh, the landscaping is always changing. So if you're seeing different landscaping, sometimes it gets overgrown, then they have to take it down and put new in. So it's always changing. So Bobby on that porch? Yes. Uh, was where the wedding reception uh, was uh, hosted by the nuns after we got married in the chapel in the, the carriage house. And then um, Annie has incorporated that into two different labels. One is uh, rosé and uh, from the other perspective, um, I think it's the, which one Annie? The Cabernet. The Cab. Oh, the red label. Huh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's anticipating this year. <laughs> Well, here's some more pictures of the porch, a uh, little bit different landscaping. There's more landscaping. Um, you guys have done a beautiful job. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we, tr we try. It's a, it's a lot. We have, ten, like I said, 10 acres, so it's a lot to take care of, but we, we try. We love it, too. We love it here. So this is the back of the house. Um, this is actually where we enter now because there's no driveway on the front. It's just The front of the house is just overlooking the city, but um, this is the back of the house. That's the back of the house. This is the front porch uh, where you would have had your reception. And um, these are just different um, carvings that I wanted to show you. And then the, the roof of the porch too. And here's the porch again. Um, on the left is our current front door. On the right is Napoleon, his sister Julia, and Lilios. And they're standing right there actually in front of that right on those steps, right in front of that door. Okay, and so here, uh, I just wanted to show, this is the, the door is open now. This is where the people would have come in back in the day, and this uh, leads to the Grand Hall. Okay. And Each of those rooms has a distinctive hardwood um, in the flooring and the furniture. Uh, is that right, Bobby? That is exactly right. And I, got, I do know all of the hardwood, so I'll try to point it out when I get to each room. But in the hall, in this hall, it's oak. And um, that carries through all the hallways. But in the rooms, it's not going to be oak. Some of the rooms it is. Also in this picture, if you can sort of see the andirons, but we'll see them better in a, um, another picture. These were actually purchased by my parents from um, William de Brule, who was a grandson of Napoleon, and I don't know how he's related to you, Hugh, but I think he might be Ernest's son, William. There's a, a cousin of mine, Ernest, uh, who is a professor in Toledo uh, at the university there. So okay. it could be his son. Yeah, well, this guy said he was, uh, he's, he's dead now. This, these were purchased in 1988, but um, he said he was the grandson of Napoleon, so. Oh, okay, then I didn't know him. Okay. All right, and this is just, I'm, I apologize for some of these pictures I had to take them with my iPhone and they didn't turn out that great. But this is in the grand hall looking, the front door would be to the right. And that's a little seating area. If you were a guest, you would get seated there and wait for the people of the house to come and get you. So that's the seating area. And here's a little bit better picture of those andirons. Uh, but they were original to the house and they were owned by wow. Napoleon. We don't have very many things that were owned by him, but that's one of them. Okay. All right, and this is uh, looking into the sitting room, uh, which is off the Grand Hall. And the sitting room, uh, the original woodwork in there is walnut. So this is the sitting room, is into the sit looking into the sitting room, and that's walnut. And that fireplace is ori original, that like you can see right there, so. A lot of the fireplaces were taken out by the second owner, which is sort of sad, but we do have some fireplaces. Um, okay, so off of the sitting room, if, if we were progressing towards the east, this is the billiard room. The billiard room is done in oak. And you can see the fireplace is to the right, but it's taken out. So this is one of my favorite parts of the billiard room. There's built-ins, and there's a lot of built-ins in this house. Uh, this is the built-in, um, Cue ball, cue ball area or the billiard balls and the cue sticks. And that was just built into the room. So it's pretty cool. I like the decanter. <laughs> That's Waterford. <laughs> is there uh, a cellar in this house? I had to ask the question. Is there what, I'm sorry? 
Is there a wine cellar? Uh, okay, so there is a wine cellar, but now, and you're going to see later on, it contains trains. And it's not like a wine cellar. Like, you would not keep the wines down there today because I think that they would just spoil, really. Okay. So, but it did have a wine cellar to begin with. Okay, and this is the back of the billiard room. There's just a long bench that goes the whole expanse of the room, which is sort of cool. All right, now we're moving into the butler's pantry. This is oak. Um, some cool things in there. Uh, in the left-hand picture, the radiator in the back of the room, it has doors on it. That is a bun warmer that the uh, butlers would have used to keep the bread or whatever they needed to keep warm in the winter. They'd keep it in there. Um, also right to the left of that bun warmer on the wall is the original call box for the butlers. It doesn't work any longer. I'm the butler. <laughs> so you disable it, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And this is um, also in the butler's pantry. This is the original ice box. It doesn't work. We just use it as storage, but it's a cool piece of furniture. It's right out of Downton Abbey. In the yeah, butler's it really room. is. <laughs> yes. This is the kitchen. Um, the kitchen is also oak. The cabinets that you see in the left-hand picture, uh, my parents had made to match the cabinets that we're going to see in a minute. The piece of furniture on the right is not original. Okay, and these are the original cabinets in the room. Those are oak. Um, the Fabers, the second owner of the house was uh, named Stuart Faber, and he was the inventor of Formica. So when we moved in the house, uh, I don't remember this, but my mom told me that we had all like green Formica in all these cabinets, and it looked, she thought, terrible. So they replaced it with that uh, type of glass type thing. They actually have a son, I think, who's a distributor in Ohio for wine. Oh, really? Yeah, he's come out and visited us. He says, my grandfather, well, maybe it's his grandpa. Um, he said, my grandfather owned that house. And I'm like, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> so it was a little bit confusing. So it's good to kind of tie this together because that was his name, Faber. Yeah, Faber, Faber. He was, uh, like I said, Faber, for Micah. I think it was. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, oh, hey, before you go on, Bobby, Elise wants to know, and she'll ask again if we don't answer this question, uh, what kind of dog is that? Oh, she's a mutt. Uh, she's just a, a German Shepherd, um, Golden Retriever, and I don't know what else. Mixed dog. All right. She's a good dog. She's a good dog. It's okay. Nuggets of black and white. We love our mixes. <laughs> yeah. Her name's Crosley. <laughs> okay. This is the dining room, and the wood in this room is mahogany. Uh, this room contains two built-ins. You can see the one on the right right now. Um, I'll show you the one on the other side of the room. And this is where I'm sitting right now, although you can't see me right now because I have my video turned off. But when you saw me before, I'm sitting in this room. And there's the other built-in on the other side. And wow. the fireplace was taken out of this room by the favors, but apparently the fireplace in this room was absolutely gorgeous. Okay, now we're moving on to, this is the only bathroom on the first floor. It's a half bath and that's an original sink. And the original tile is in there as well. So, and originally we had, uh, this house had only four full baths and three, three half baths. We had to put an extra bathroom and so now we have five full baths and three half baths. When we got married, there was one great big bathroom upstairs. <laughs> yeah, that's gone now. That's exactly right. When we moved here, that was the only bathroom that worked. If they had made a bedroom upstairs into a bathroom. Yeah. It's the only bathroom that worked in the whole house. That was for all the nuns. That's right. <laughs> that is right. Okay. And um, okay, so this is looking from the parlor. I uh, we're coming we're coming back to the west of the house. Uh, the parlor into the library. And there's a hall in between, which I'm gonna show you now. Sorry, this picture's not so good. This is the hall between the parlor and the library. And to the left of that door is the cornerstone. So just to give you an idea of where we are. And this is the library. And the library is cherry, all, all cherry. Um, I think that the Fabers also took out a lot of the bookcases, as you can't see any in this picture. And they also took out the mantle um, over the fireplace. Did that used to be the piano room? No, that's the parlor, which uh, I'm going to come oh, okay. to next. So the, no, this is always the library. And we actually have the original plans of the first floor. And so for sure, I know um, what the rooms were. Yeah. 
So this is, now you can see another angle of the library. To the left, there's a little porch off the library, and those are the only remaining book, well, there's another set that you can't see, but uh, those are the remaining bookcases. And here's the bookcases that are original, and they're all cherry. And I just wanted to show you in this picture the pocket doors. Um, the pocket door to the left is cherry, and the pocket door to the right is oak. That leads into the parlor. Um, each side of the door is very interesting. Each side of the door is different. So on the other side of that cherry uh, library door, you're going to have an oak door because it's in the hallway. So they matched the wood to where, where it what was in the room. Okay, so and this is the uh, attention to detail runs in the family. <laughs> yes, really. You guys are like that. <laughs> um, this is a parlor, so this is a piano room. There you go. And this wood in this room is this is the most special wood in the house because it's very uh, scarce today, but it's called blonde primavera wood. And that's so to the right, and I uh, right above that the uh, little table there. That is the window that is above the cornerstone, and that is the window that they replaced the wood with just junk plywood. So we haven't tried to go in it, but maybe someday we will. <laughs> this is a, another view, and you can see all the, the primavera wood. I, I mean, it's hard to tell from pictures, but it's really pretty. Okay, so now we're just gonna go upstairs. This is the main staircase. And the window that you see, uh, the big window in front of you, in the 1920s, they said uh, it was replaced and it was a hunt scene, um, this beautiful stained glass, but apparently in the 1920s, they said it was in terrible disrepair. So it got replaced mm. with not, not anything special. It's just glass. I mean, it's sort of stained glass, but not really. <coughs> okay, and this is the upstairs hall. And I have pictures of just three bedrooms up here but I just thought you might want to see some bedrooms. So this is, um, this bedroom actually was Napoleon de Brule's, um, his like office, he used this as an office. And when he was sick later in life, this was like where he stayed in this room. Uh, and my daughter, is my daughter's room now and she uses it as a fashion design studio. So she had to put that picture in there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give her a shout out she's on instagram as backseat demon and she's fun to follow yep and she is always posting new fashion things so yeah thank you for shouting her out <laughs> <laughs> this is okay so this is looking into the bathroom between napoleon napoleon's bedroom and his office here this is the bathroom i'm sorry it's hard to see but that's the original sink and the original bathtub the toilet has been replaced but the tile walls are also original. I don't know about the floor. And then this is his bedroom from the hall. And so we'll be walking into his bedroom here. Uh, it's, we were in the phase of remodeling. So on the right, we're, we've redone the floors. We've taken out all that carpet. We redone the floors in there and we repainted the woodwork because it was sort of messed up. So this is how it was before we redid it. And then this is looking out into the hall. Okay, so this is also Napoleon's bedroom and that is his built-in over there where he would have kept his whatever. But you can see that I opened a closet door and I'm gonna show you in a second, the next picture. This is the closet door that's open. He has a window in his closet. Um, so he can see, I guess, you know, in the morning when he's getting dressed and what he wants to put on. So that was just an interesting uh, detail. And then this room is the balcony room. This room faces south. It's got a huge balcony on the front, uh, over the front porch where you guys would have had your reception. And here, here's the balcony room. And you can sort of see better here, the, um, the downtown skyline on the right-hand picture. All right, now we've gone up to the roof. And this is where I showed wow. you on the first video. Um, I've got, a, I've got a video to show you the roof a little bit better than this, but we have beautiful sunsets up there. Uh, this is just looking down. You can see the roof over there. Okay, and so this. There's a cat on the carriage house label, by the way. I know, it's not this cat. That cat died. His name was Noisy. <laughs> Noisy. Mm -hmm. 
noisy. So this is just the, I just wanted to show you the roof. No you know. railings. No, there's no railings. So you got to be careful when you're up there. But that's, <laughs> that's how it is up there. It's big. It's bigger than it actually looks um, on that video. And I got another video right here. So I'll show you this one. It's sort of spectacular. Yeah, the view of the city is amazing. And that little hatch you just saw was where you go out onto the roof. <laughs> but it really, it's, it's a, an amazing part of the house, really. Okay, now we're going to the basement. And this is what I told Carrie about this this morning. But this is where the train station wine comes into play at this house. So every bit of your wine we use here because in the basement we have trains oh. and those are the trains that we have and i just oh my goodness my dad made this and it took him 15 years to make and he's still working um on it oh my so he comes over every so often to work on it so i'll just quickly run through the pictures i just took a bunch of them but i'll show you our yeah. trains we have a train station and I, I, when I was taking these pictures, I noticed he does not have Napoleon de Brule in this cemetery, but he needs to add him. Save a spot for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's plenty of spots over there. <laughs> and all these buildings have something to do with Cincinnati, so. There's Michael Tyre. Yes, Michael Tire. That's a lot of Michael Tire on here. And there is our train station. So, and this is where they sit and drink the train station wine, and then they go back out and play with the trains. So, this is a little bar downstairs that they. I like that there's dedicated spots to drink the different wines. That's, that's <laughs> we all need that in all of our houses, I think. Absolutely. So, yeah, when you guys made the train station, we were just so excited. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this is, I just added a few more pictures at the end. So you can see the carriage house. So right in that door you see at the far right, the, the more ornate door, that's where the, um, the chapel was. Yep. So that's where you would have gotten married. And that plant that's in a yellow pot uh, sitting on that wall was, that plant belonged to Lilios. So I still have that plant today. <laughs> and then this is the arbor. Uh, looking down at the house. Uh, no longer, this is where the pool was, the original pool, but that's no longer there. And the, um, the bathhouse that was up there is no longer there. And then this is just the back of the carriage house. And this is where our pool is today. There's our pool today, right behind the carriage house. And then that's the front of the carriage house. And that's it. So... Bobby, that did you hear the story from the wine spectator pouring in Las Vegas? No. Okay. Um, Carrie and her sister-in-law, Carrie, um, both Shields were pouring Cote Bonneville at the, the wine spectator event in Las Vegas. And this gentleman came up and he said, I was sent over here to taste the wine. And so as they were pouring, he said, could I see that label, please? And he said, I've been there. And he said, where is this? And Carrie said, Carrie Shields, Carrie, Carrie Claire Shields said, um, this is our uh, great grandfather's home outside of Cincinnati. And he said, I've been in there. And so Carrie calls me from Vegas and says, dad, where is this house? And I said, well, it's up Coleraine Avenue across from Mount Erie Forest. And he said, yes, I've been there a couple of times. It was Rich Aurelia who played third base, um, mostly for the San Francisco Giants, but he did play in Cincinnati for two years. And Bobby's uh, parents did a whole lot of fundraising activities. And you can see how Bobby has maintained that place. I don't think it's just for the kids, but from what I understand, she's continued the tradition of fundraising activities, especially for St. X High School, which is where Tony and I were classmates at X. And so Rich Aurelia said, yes, I've been in there for activities that the Michael family was hosting. And so that was another three 
degrees of separation and they got looped back together. Wow, that's that's a great story. I love that. And we do still do the wine. Uh, we do wine tasting dinners here for uh, St. X and for a lot of the high schools. And so we pair all of, we call them our house wines. It's all the Cope Bonneville wines. Uh, we pair them with different, you know, courses. And we have about a 10 to 12 course dinner. Um, and we sell that at the, uh, the auctions for the schools. So it's fun. Great. All right. So Annie, do you want to give us a little bit of the thought process of the connection of the labels? I mean, like we did a pretty good job of covering when we went to the different parts of the house, what wines they go with, but. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that was amazing to see. I've, I remember, I mean, you, you, you hit on a lot of the hot spots, and I don't have a beautiful presentation for you, but I guess my presentation would be what's on all of the bottles of wine that all of you are enjoying. Um, but I, I remember when we started this project such a long time ago that, all, that our children were children. Now, of course, you're not children, you're adults. <laughs> and, um, and, and Hugh handed me, Hugh and Ka Charles and I met with Hugh and Kathy and and a lot of this was still just in early stages and, and Hugh handed me a CD with all these images on it. And he handed me a rubbing of the cornerstone and he handed me all these things and said, go figure it out. And um, we talked a lot about what the ideas were, what the concept was, how we might bring the story to life um, and never imagined in the beginning how many different aspects of that beautiful property and the different um, vantage points of the home from the exterior could have been included in all of those different wines that covered the various different varietals that were developed over time. So what a wonderful opportunity to see it kind of more live from your presentation, Bobby, than all of these pictures I've been looking at for years and years and years and taking bits and pieces of and incorporating it into the overall product package family and portrait of wine. So um, we, we, we always discussed, you know, what might be the best image for a particular varietal. When we started out with the carriage, I did the illustration for the carriage house. So if any of you have a carriage house in front of you, that illustration was one that I did based on the photography that Hugh had provided to me, Hugh and Kathy had given me. And um, we started out thinking that we wanted to give it that look. But after that point, and certainly for the coat, we used the images themselves and did various things with those images to enhance different parts of the property. Maybe in, in a few cases, some of the imagery was digitized and manipulated a little bit electronically. I know that sounds kind of blasphemous when you look at the beautiful history that is being represented by the estate, but um, it seemed to suit the varietal and the different things that we were trying to accomplish. So I think we've done a great job over time maintaining the integrity of the brand and certainly the cornerstone is a um, a concurrent element on all of the different labels in some way, shape, or form, as Carrie mentioned earlier. Um, you know, Hugh and I <laughs> and Kathy and, and Carrie, as time went on, we've had many, 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 many conversations back and forth trying to sort out who's thinking what and how are we going to bring that to light. And But if it weren't for Charles, this guy sitting right here, managing the business end of all of this, <laughs> who knows what might have happened. But um, you know, Hugh and Kathy put me up in their home and served me fabulous dinners and gave me the unbelievable opportunity to spend time in the vineyard, sometimes by myself, sometimes um, at the at the side of the of the Rosa when she still could be heard. Now he has to open a valve so I can hear her. Um, but it's it's just been an incredibly amazing journey and a great gift for me to be involved with such passionate, creative, um, dedicated people that have brought this wine to life. Well, Annie, I don't know if you saw in the chat, but apparently there's a growing consensus that um, the fountain needs to be on sparkling wine. And I'm not <laughs> planning on making sparkling anytime soon. But if you want to just noodle on that, just, you know, have fun. I'm probably not going to make sparkling anytime soon because it's a lot of work. But things to think. All that riddling. 
<laughs> you just never know, right? You just never know. We need a Cap Franc label as well, says the Peanut Gallery, and I will we'll shut them down. We're making Cap Franc his train station. And this is why we're putting the Cap Franc as train station. This is the beauty of the train station label, because we made this one so that whenever we do a new version, all we have to do is change these words. The problem with with code labels, and honestly, it's one of the re one of the multiple reasons we never made Cap Franc. It's a lot of work to make a new wine because you don't just make the wine, you have to make the bottle and the packaging and all the things. And so, um, well, and our labels were designed for certain bottles and bottles come and go. And um, it, it <laughs> yeah. labels, as you know, sort of fill up the face of the bottle. Yeah. So uh, this one in particular <laughs> is a hard one. Whenever they change the bottle, I mean, and like, oh no. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> and, and something to note, if you, this bottle's tapered. So most bottles, most labels are square and bottles are square. If you have a square label designed for a tapered bottle, your labels are not square. Right. They don't, they, they, they angle. Yep. And yep. Um, so you can always, whenever you're looking at tapered bottles, pay attention to whether or not they paid attention to what they were doing because <laughs> Annie pays attention. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, there's a thread of you know attention to detail apparently but no we we did nuance quite a few things on every single label didn't we mm -hmm. and and then in those early days we were a little different than most wineries in those early days but i can remember um some people we won't say who they are but said well i don't like your labels <laughs> okay now it's going to be a naysayer they're all different and they're really hard to sell because they're all different. I said, well, they're all different ones. It's the house. You have to have the whole family. You need all of them. I mean, but it was like, you, know, you need to change your labels. And I said, mm, that's not happening. No. <laughs> so, so um, but yet then we've had other people say in restaurants um, for ordeals that they, when the red label hit a Seattle party at a restaurant, there were a bunch of Psalms that were saying, what's that wine? I don't know what that wine is. Oh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't make a Cabernet Sauvignon. That's, that's got to be a Cote Bonneville. Uh, how can you tell? I can tell by the label. Well, they don't make a, a Cabernet Sauvignon. What is it? And sure enough, it was our red label Cabernet. So we have prevailed through the years with them. Um, <laughs> but I, it was not without a little controversy along the way. <laughs> well, things worthwhile seldom are without that. So I hope it's been worthwhile for you. I've been an absolute, I've been so fortunate to be part of the journey we both have. Indeed. That's great team. Yeah, for sure. Well, now that I've seen inside, uh, <laughs> there's additional material to draw upon. <laughs> additional wines. <laughs> no, Charles, no. no. <laughs> I'm already saying if Annie comes up with a sparkling label, then I have to make the wine. And I. Don't, don't put that kind of pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> or me. <laughs> well, I was like, oh, so I'd much rather have you come over and work harvest instead of try to get us another wine. That, okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, and, and I had that, that unbelievable opportunity once too. It was the 08, I got to pick stems. And so instead of just being responsible for things on the outside of the bottle, that particular vintage, I felt like I had the tiniest little contribution to what went inside the bottle. <laughs> It's like Tom Sawyer painting the fence. You know, come on over. <laughs> to us, it's a lot of work, and everybody else thinks it's it's magic. <laughs> We'd yes. love to have you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, we are almost at six o'clock. So, do we have any other questions, or just should we take a minute and everybody fill up your glasses because we have to do a big old cheers. Just a second. I have a question. I've got to get out of Kathy's. Yeah. Uh, Amy, Amy has a question. Okay. Ian. Wait a minute. Oh, well. <laughs> For Bobby, with the one uh, in the PowerPoint presentation early in the picture, when they showed the, the photograph of uh, the family, I thought there was an E on the end of the rule. Oh. Uh, it could have possibly maybe been a misspelling. I don't, I don't remember if there was any. Can you see it? Um, it was spelled differently. Yeah, uh, originally it was spelled like D, 
you, then B R E I U L E. I think that was originally how it was spelled, but when they moved to the I United States, I think it's B R U E I L is the yeah, French uh, spelling. And there are three chateaus: one in Burgundy, one in Bordeaux, and one in Normandy that are Chateau du Bray, and we have a bottle of the Chardonnay from Burgundy in our cellar, and an empty bottle from Bordeaux, and an empty bottle from Normandy of the original spelling. But can you take a pic peek at that picture, or is it too difficult to go back to that? I'm, I'm actually trying to go back through it right now, but... Uh... It was early well, on. While you're finding it, um, we will... I'm gonna, I'm gonna show these these glasses, they do have the cornerstone on them. I think you can see mom's better. Um, we don't sell these. We might have to make them again. These were our original tasting room glasses and there's only a case of them left and they're in mm -hmm. they're my personal glasses. So Paul, you gotta be a lot nicer to me if you want any. Because <laughs> 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 um, I love drinking out of them. But, and then Natalie wanted to know how mom and dad ended up in Washington State. Oh yeah, Gus has branded uh, Govinos, which are very nice. They yeah. don't have the cornerstone, but um, maybe that'll be our next round of glasses that we make. So how we wound up in Washington State, um, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Kathy was a physical therapist. We were looking for a state in the West to settle in. Kathy's two brothers, Gus, um, in the next uh, image. And uh, his older brother, John, lived in the Seattle area. We came over um, multiple times and had a tough time with the cloudy weather uh, on the west side of the Cascades. The people in Sunnyside were incredibly nice. The hospital didn't think we could make it as an orthopedic team. Um, the bank didn't think we could make it, but Kathy and I said, well, we'll give it a try and we can always leave. And so then, we always seem to have a new project about every 10 years. And uh, in the, the, at the 20 year point, we were looking for an additional thing to do and found the hillside that was covered with an old orchard. And Wade Wolf was our consultant. He said, I think it'll make a nice vineyard. And then uh, the rest is history with a tremendous launch that Wade gave us. And uh, again, the the beautiful labels have been an incredible branding item, and so we thank the Morning Stars again, and the Michaels and Bobby for all the support through the years. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And Amy, uh, for your for the answer to that, it does have an E on the end, but I think it whatever publication that was in, wherever I got that picture, I think it was a misspelling because I never saw anywhere else where it had an E on the end. Good eye. Yeah, good eye. <laughs> oh, incidentally, Ryan was um, our best man at the wedding in the yeah. carriage house and yeah. on the front porch for yeah. the reception. And so, um, 1973 we his support over the years, too. 1973. Wow. Yep. Just like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. If any of you all are in Cincinnati, just feel free to call me. Carrie has my number, and you are more than welcome to come over for a tour. Huh? That'd be nice. Yeah. Oh, well, we're, this group wants to go traveling when we can, and we're heading to Kansas City for a barbecue, going so to, you never we're know. Going to, we're going to France on the river cruise together. We're going to Kansas City for barbecue. We're doing a geology tour. Apparently, we're all coming to Cincinnati. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. I'd love to have you. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a big old road trip. It's going to be fantastic. we got to wait for the border to open so Tony can get out of jail. <laughs> Have to smuggle you in, Tony. <laughs> so, all right. Well, on that note, um, the road trip schedule will be available pending COVID. But everything is after harvest. <laughs> yeah. Because we are about two weeks. We'll probably have some Chardonnay that comes in. If it's not for us, it'll be for one of our um, customer wineries who gets Chardonnay. Uh, probably in a couple of weeks. So um, in the meantime, we've got a lot of prep work. We've got to get ready for it. Um, and then it will be, it'll be as every harvest, unique and exciting and different and you can't plan it. And it's just, it's, it's such a fun time of year because it's so all encompassing. 
that all of these wonderful ideas that you guys have are going, are all, we're going to, I'm going to write them on a piece of paper and I'm going to put them in a file for look again after harvest. So oh, good. Um, don't forget that uh, this is the last of the weekly series, but we plan to do a uh, harvest wrap happy hour in November. So keep tracking on your um, mailing list and that'll be announced. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all again and tell you what a wonderful year it is. Yeah. And in the meantime, we will be running the club. We will have your cab franc, even if it doesn't have the house on the label. It's got the train station on the label. To be drunk so in the to be, train room. To be drunk in your train room. <laughs> if you don't have a train room yet, <laughs> now you have projects too. Get on it. Because <laughs> <laughs> this whole house wine concept is the best thing ever. <laughs> and, um, and I just want to say, hey, everybody, cheers. Thank you guys so much for being awesome COVID partners and COVID buddies throughout this whole experience. It's been, uh, this has definitely been a highlight of 2020. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you guys so much. We hope to see you. Thank you for the tour. You're welcome. Oh yeah. Thanks Bobby. That was great. You're welcome. Anytime. Yeah. Okay. I want to say from Nebraska, I have learned so much since March about uh, your winery. I look forward to when we get to go back up and visit my husband's family in Washington. You're definitely going to be a stop. Um, it's 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 been incredible. So thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate all you folks sticking with us. Yeah. Hey, Bobby, quick question: What was the long-running five-star restaurant? downtown Cincinnati. That was the Masonette. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Are they still open? No, they closed, oh my gosh, 10 years ago, probably. Oh, okay. Well, so when we go to, when we go visit the house, we'll go to eat Skyline Chili. We'll go to Montgomery in for ribs. Rip. And those were the two tastes. Oh, and Grater's ice cream. Gotta have Grater's ice cream. But you don't have to go to Cincinnati. Grater's will ship to you. Yeah. <laughs> I make a vegan version of the Skyline Chili. It's called Sky Like Chili. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, we used to live in Cincinnati and we go back every year. Tell her I'm I well cool. You <laughs> love this. definitely. You guys will come together. That'll be great. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye, y'all. See you in a couple months. Yep. Leave?